Lucky, thank you very much for your time, my brother. I know it's a bit late now, but yeah. Uh, how are you feeling? Um, I'm okay, my guy. Uh, a bit exhausted from the day, but I'm fine. I'm feeling good. How are you doing? You're good. All right. No, I'm well, my brother. Uh, obviously, before we get into, into what <laughs> uh, we want to talk about, which is uh, football matters relating to Middlebeck United, uh, it will be good for us just to know who is lacking OC, where do you yeah. come from, how do you fall in love with football and end up being the head coach here at Middlebeck United. Okay, no. Um, so Ulaki Chulani uh, Kosi is a guy from Woodbank, born and bred in Woodbank. Mm -hmm. Fortunately enough, I've played football um, in and around Woodbank. Um, in the amateur divisions, Kassel, Vodacom, that was, it was called Kassel and Vodacom in those days. And I was very, very fortunate in 2010, I managed to secure myself a contract with Impumalanga Black Aces, which was playing in the PSL in that season. Mm -hmm. So we are, I had a spell in the PSL. But for most of my football career, I've played with Vodacom, which is ABC uh, today. today. So yeah, that is my football journey in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how do you then move from playing to coaching? Well, with the, the issue of um, age in football, when they introduced the issue of under 23 and, 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 and that age restriction, and I was above the th that threshold, I was 25 going to 26 and 7, I noticed and realized that it's fading. My career is fading um, as much as I'm ambitious, but with all of the, those restrictions and other issues that related to my playing career, I said, no man, um, it's, it's, it's coming to an end. So um, I, 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 called it a, I called it a day, if you'd if you, if say in football. And then um, I pursued a business of fitness, which, was, which fell, in, fell into play with what I was doing. So I, 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 I followed that journey, uh, being a personal trainer, owning my, my own studio, but knowing very well that um, it will propel me one day to be part of a team, whether in the fitness element or as a coach, which, yeah, it's working out very well. Uh, which position did you play in your, in your playing days? Uh, I was an attacking midfielder, which is now your number 10 position. Yeah, so I was, uh, yeah, yeah, playing that position, you need to be very, very good, in a, I'd say. So, yeah, I was good it, enough. At least did you get to wear number 10 in one of the teams? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I only started wearing number 10 when we were playing uh, your social games, just for the fun of it. But mm. I loved Cristiano Ronaldo. So I wore number 7 for, for all of my life because I loved Cristiano Ronaldo, his work ethic and his work rate. So that's why I wore that jersey number. Uh, your nickname is Joker. That's right. And when I think of Joker, I think Joker Bonito, I think about Ronaldinho, I think Brazil, 100%. I think his skill, Fugela. 100%, 100%. So is that how you played? That's how I, that's how I played, that's how I got the name. That's how you played? Um, uh, from doing freestyle football. Oh, okay. And so I was one of the first guys, like Aslami, to do freestyle. Mm -hmm. And I was, to be very frank, I was the best at Kasi. Yeah, so I, that's how I, I earned that name. Yeah, well, but I didn't pursue that one. It was just something that I did. Mm. But on the field, I would, I, would, I would do as much justice, you know. I was not a star player, but I was good. Mm. <laughs> but I was good. Mm. Now, being called Joker, obviously, we understand the skill. Yes. Does that translate into your approach in coaching? Uh, tactically, how, how is your approach? How would you define your approach as a coach? Well, as a coach, my approach, um, I, I, I love skillful players, I love good players. But understanding modern football, it's not about skill and flair, although it's in my game, it's, it's needed. We've got a, a few players that have got the flair, that have got the skill. Mm -hmm. But I also understand that there has to be a, a lot of work rate, a lot of work. So my approach is, you've got to work hard, you've got to work for the points, you've got to work for the win, but you need an element of flair. Mm -hmm. You need to still have that South African feel, uh, that Kasi flavor needs to always be there which is what I do impose and I do um, have in my team. So if, if I were to watch your team, uh, I'll get excited. Oh, my word. <laughs> <laughs> uh, guaranteed. 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 I, there, there are a couple of players there that we know that they are there to, to showcase for the fans, for us, for the pleasure of it. There are players that are there that as much as they are effective playing, but they're also effective into how they play, how they attack, how they, they make the game interesting. Mm -hmm. So we've got a, a perfect mix in terms of Cassie Flay. Uh, you spoke about, you saw that your career was coming to an end, you got into the fitness business. 
Uh, how did you get your, your first coaching job? Um, well, oh, this one, to, it, it, it goes back when I was still playing in the Vodacom League, um, a team that I was playing for, which was Linville All-Stars. Uh, we had a coach who was not doing well. So the team was sitting at number 15 on the log, relegation zone. So the, 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 the boss of the team at that time, he trusted me so much and he said, Joga, you're going to take over the team. Um, I refused, I refused, I refused. I said, no, but I'm still playing. I still want to play. Mm. And he said to me, I know you want to play and I know you're still playing, but you're going to play and coach. Which was a, a big conundrum for me to say, how am I going to coach guys that I'm playing with, with yeah. when I make mistakes? Who tells me when I'm not having a good game? Who's on my case? How do I tell them their mistakes? So, but eventually I was forced into the job. Mm. And I, I, I pulled up my socks and I, I coached the team as a player. And we moved from number 15 on the log and we finished at number seven on the log. Wow. So that season, when that happened, I saw that I, I do have the abilities to, to, to fix a team, to work a team, to put guys together, to get the, the job done. Mm. So that's where and how my coaching journey started. But obviously after that, we put it aside and continued with other things, the business um, and life in general. But I was also very fortunate last season when I was asked to come and join a team called Ewood Bank Shepherd, which was in the ABC Mutsipa League, mm. to be the conditioning coach there, which is your fitness coach. So that team had a very, very good spell. In the whole season, we lost the game and we drew a game and we won everything. Unfortunately, we lost the second rounds of the playoffs mm. um, to Isvuta from Nelspray. So my, my coaching journey was only Gulu Unimville All-Stars, one or two seasons, and as a conditioning coach, and then now um, asked to say, we've got a team in middle back, can you come and be the head coach? And my, my experience said to me, I can do it. So I took on the charts. That's, that's very brave of you. Eh? Uh, you you've been a, a coach at Linville All Stars, but you were still a player. Yeah, you yeah. were just transitioning. And immediately after that, you didn't pursue that. You went yeah. into with your business of fitness until then you are called to Ben Shepherds to be conditioning coach. Yeah. And uh, comes this job and you say, you'll take it. Um, I, I think. Like I said, I was not a star player. I was not your, 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 your Zongos. I was not your, your Makanyas, your Chabupules, but I was a very effective player. But I think I have the brains. Mm. I think I, 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 I can, I'm very good at understanding and analyzing the game. Fortunately, because one of the best coaches that have coached me was Uniel Tovi. That gentleman is a football genius. So I learned how to analyze football, how to analyze the game, how to analyze players. So with that knowledge, and that understanding, I took, on the, I took on the job. And I believed that I could do it, you know? And I believed I could put this team together. Now, uh, as someone who is into to fitness, I'm sure you've pursued uh, whatever relevant certifications within uh, the conditioning uh, yeah. element of football. But have you pursued any in terms of your coaching, your D license, yeah. your C license yeah. like that? Right, so you're, you're, you're correct. Um, with my fitness um, profession, I, I, I do have qualifications, but it's only now that I, I'm going to pursue mm. uh, certifications in, in, in the coaching department because it was not something that I was pursuing in life. I took it on as and when. Yes. But now that I realize that it, it seems to be something that is now working out, you know, whether that's going to work out in patches, but I realize that now surely I, need to, I do need to be certified to a certain degree, you know. Yeah. So, so at, at this point, we can say uh, your your business of with, with fitness is going ahead, but your focus now is on coaching. Um, let's let's say they are working parallel. <laughs> um, <laughs> they are working parallel. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, I'm not I'm not focusing on one and not and neglecting the other in yes. any sense. So they are working uh, parallel. So my business in fitness and coaching, I'm doing both. Yeah. So. Uh, you, so the team has a head coach who's a specialist in conditioning. So y your boys must be in top, 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 <laughs> top shape. <laughs> um, I think for the level that we're playing, they are. Yeah. Um, I think uh, with, with the league that we're playing, my boys are, are, are fit enough to compete. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I had that experience in the last season with the team that I was with. We were winning games 
in the last minutes of the game because we were outperforming out, out in terms of fitness. So with these guys as well, I think, yeah, in that department, um, I, I don't think they'll fail. Okay, before we get into to the season that you had, uh, can you just tell us a bit about Middlebeck United? Okay, so Middlebeck United is a team that was formed, uh, I think it's three or four years ago. Um, started in the LFA, uh, got promoted, I think, in the first season of the LFA. Went in to play E.E. Castle, right, which is the current uh, legacy Zalayo. In that season, in their first season, they played, and they had, they had a very good spell. I was not part of that team, mm. but they had a great spell. And they lost Buma Regional Playoffs, unfortunately, which was last season. Um, and with, I think, a few logistical issues, they then asked me to be available um, because the chairman of that team has a relationship with the chairman, the chairman of the current team of, of, of Shepard, which was the team I was with last season. So I think they conversed and said, no, this guy can help us, uh, given my work that I put in Ugugu Shepard. So yeah, with the a Middlebeck United is based in Middlebeck, a team as a in Middlebeck, representing in Middlebeck, Ugugu uh, Gulele So you, you take over a team that won uh, the stream. Yeah but just uh, couldn't go through in the marginal playoffs. So, but they were number one in the yes. history. So we are taking over a team, that, that is a successful team. Sure. Mm. Uh, what goes through your mind now if you're thinking, if I take over this team, the only best I could do is to do what they've done that season, which is to win the league yeah. and then go compete in, in the regional yeah. playoffs. So you can't go <laughs> lower. Low, lower than that. Did yeah. you f think maybe you're under pressure to deliver given the fact that that was your, your first full-time head coach yeah, job? Yeah. Um, I don't think I was under pressure. Mm. Um, I really don't think I was under pressure. Or maybe I was a bit naive or arrogant in taking on a job that I have to surpass the last season's um, 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 successes. Maybe there was naivety in me or, or arrogance. I don't know. And maybe I didn't even give it much thought even. Mm. So I, I can't really answer that question because Nami, I... You were just excited. I, I, not even. I, I, there were no emotions. I just said, no, I can do this. Mm. I just said, no, I can do this, you know, and also considering um, I think I knew a few of the players that were there and I trusted the players that were there and I knew that if I get there and there are three or four players that are not in the mix, we can always add and make it work. Mm. So, yeah, maybe I just didn't think about it much. So, when you came in, obviously, the team had its players. Yeah. Uh, did, do you, did you assess the team and release some players and bring in uh, other players? To, to, to put together a squad that you felt uh, could play for you and compete? That, I'll answer it like this. That is one mistake that I think, in my view, as amateur as I am as a coach, a mistake that a lot of coaches make to get to a team and restructure everything. Mm. I got to the team, on my first day, I said, let me watch the guys at training. Let me watch them do what they normally do. Mm. First day I watched, I sat and I watched. Second day I just intervened with one or two. The first week was, was a, bit, a, bit, a bit stagnant for me because I just watched what was happening. Mm. I did not bring any players to the team. I did not chase anyone away as mm. the head coach. I looked at the players and I said, this material is good. What is not, wh whoever's not at their A game, we're going to bring them up. That's okay. all that we needed to do. So no, I did not change anything in the team. Playing personnel, I did not change. Structure of play, I did not change. I just enhanced what the team had. So the league starts, you played 18 games, you won 16, yeah. you drew one game and only lost one. Th that, is, uh, that is amazing. Yeah, I mean, I mean with the people that we have in that team, we, we had to. Mm. The pressure. You know, you asked the question, did I feel the pressure when, when I was asked to join the team? And I, I actually think I felt the pressure when the game started. Yes. Because now you realize that you've got these guys that are against you. All of these teams want to beat you. That's all they want. They don't care about each other. They want to beat you, Middleback United. Mm -hmm. And with that, you, you have to. You have to come up to, to, to your A game. You've got to do it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, we just had to, my man. We just had to. And now, uh, you know, in South African football, uh, we, we, we do all the nice things. Uh, we, we know how to pass, we know how to dribble, sugar, and all that, and mm -hmm. we struggle with goals. Yeah. But your team scored 74 goals <laughs> in 18 games. <laughs> How do you do that? <laughs> uh, look, I did say to you, we've got players that have got flair. 
mm -hmm. play beautiful football. But what I've always tried to teach the guys and tell the guys, which I always do, is do your flair, but it must have an end result. Yes. I don't care what you do with the ball. I don't care whether you stand on it and whatever, but there must be an end result. Although we're winning 8, 10, whatever the score, let's just keep going for the purpose because these are habits now. They become habits. Mm. You know, that's why we got so many goals because we would win 7, 10, 16, whatever the case. Because we want it to be a habit. Because we understand or I understand that there are games that might not go according to plan. Yes. And if we don't have a habit of scoring and the game is not going well, then we won't score at all. But we have to get used to scoring no matter what we do. We need to get to the goals. That's how and why we got so many goals. On top of the fact that we've got amazing players that just know how to do the job. Uh, Coach, someone looking, for, looking at, the, at the log table might look and think, ah, this league is too easy for Middlebeck United. Yo. <laughs> they might think, uh, only lost one game uh, in, in 18 games, uh, scored se 74 goals is not, uh, it's not an Just easy thing. Yeah. And mind you, you scored 74 and only considered seven. Uh, so someone might look and think, ah, yeah. it's too easy. It is, it, is, it, is it as easy as it looks when you look at the log standings? Um, papers, papers lie. Mm. When I say papers lie, I mean that what you're seeing on paper in terms of our results, they'll fool you. We had games that we won 4-0, but it was a tough game. A tough, tough game where we were fighting. I was fighting with the players. The players were fighting amongst themselves. But we managed to get, a, to get that goal, and we kept fighting because the team is fighting us. And yes, we had games where the team was not, you know, they don't come to the party, and it might have flown. We had games where we won 1-0. So no, the league was not easy. Not by any stretch. It's just that we, we, I'm a person who believes in fighting for everything. We fought and we fought and we fought well. And like I said in the previous question, although we're winning 4 nil, 7 nil, whatever the case, just keep going to score. Then it makes life easy for us. The league was difficult because every team wanted to beat Middlebeck United. Every team was against Middlebeck United. Uh, uh, coach, as a coach, yes, I understand you, you, you're thinking that we must keep going. It's not easy. But for players at times, uh, game after game, you're winning 4 nil, 5 nil, 7, they might get complacent and think uh, this thing is too easy, we just yeah. need to pitch up and win. How did you ensure that you, 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 you work on their psychology to ensure that they don't get complacent, they don't think yeah. it's just too easy yeah. and they start uh, not playing at the, at, at the, at yeah. the high level? Um, in, in, in the league and the division that we're playing, because uh, teams in this division, um, don't have a structure of play, don't have a system of play. They basically rely on certain individuals to do the job for them. And yes, you might watch an individual play this week, he's outstanding, he might be their star player. Watch him the next game, he's just as good. Come the third game, he's nowhere to be found in terms of performance. So going to study players and then you go and study a team and you wanna plan for this one and that one, for me, doesn't work. It might work and it probably works in, in PSL and maybe going up into the Premier Leagues Yes, because teams have got a structure, they've got a way of play, they've got a system of play. You can plan against such. Mm. Here in the league that we are playing, I don't think it's important, I don't think it works. Yeah. If we go to a game and there are two, three players that are exceptionally good, that are giving us a problem, we have to deal with those individuals. You will probably not find the whole team playing with a structure that will give you problems. Mm. So for that reason, I don't see the need or the importance of going to study a team that you're gonna play off in these playoffs um, or in the league that we are playing, I would, not, I would not do it. I would not do it because I know that we'll deal with two people on the day. And that's that. If you deal with these two people, whether it's the one who's starting play or whether the one who's, it's the one who's running, if you deal with these two, then you're done. That's, that's my understanding and my philosophy in this league because of the standard and the level of football that we're playing in this league. So you'd be going to the provincial playoffs just to impose yourselves the way you play without worrying what they do. You, you want to believe in what you do best and hope it, it brings results. Um, you use a, a word that says hope it brings results. <laughs> 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 no, look, we, yes, we're going we're gonna to go as, as, as we are, mm. as we know ourselves to play. Because for me and for us, it's you've got to stop me. We're not there to stop you from anything. You've got to do what you've got to do to stop us. Like I said, I, 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 I trust firstly my defense. We've considered seven goals. Mm. And we've played against good players, good teams, amazing players that are a problem for days. 
but we're able to manage. Now it's for you to stop my guys. You know, um, that's my approach to go towards these playoffs. Um, and it's not, it's not. Yes, we hope we will win, but we're going there to, we go there to fight. Right. And we're going to take it. Uh, Coach, you you born and bred in Whitbank. Uh, you've played football here. Uh, what do you think of the standard of football in Malaysia right now? Ooh, right now. Um, with a with a, with a heavy heart, it's 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 not good. Mm. With a heavy heart, it's not good. We don't have players coming up anymore. We don't have we don't have youngsters that are looking to 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 say, oh, he's 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 got a, a lot of potential. Yo, this one is probably going to make it. This one is probably going to, you know, um, we don't have teams in the lower in the lower leagues anymore. So, ah, Kaslami in terms of uh, football. It's, it's dwindling. Mm. It's sad because it's dwindling, you know, so I'm actually even lost for us to say, yeah, it, it's bad. Mm. For me, it's bad. It's bad. Coach, uh, Emma Lachlan, like the name says, uh, it's, there are a lot of coal mines here. There are a lot of uh, big, big corporations mining here, making big profits. Why do you think they are not taking some of those pro profits and giving them back to the community in terms of sponsoring teams. Yeah. Uh, because a place like Malathlin should have a team maybe in the NFT, well yeah. sponsored given the fact yeah. that we have a lot of businesses operating yeah. in this area. Um, I, I hate politics. Um, I'm, I, I don't do politics, but you, 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 you're making me tap into politics. Mm. I think, number one, it's got to do with people's interest, right? Mm. People go into a team but they've got ulterior motives. They don't go to the team to enrich the team, to build for the future, to um, invest in the team's success and the team's uh, growth. People go to teams for self-benefit. So even if they go to for sponsorships and so on, people have got ulterior motives. Mm. And when we try, when people try and get into these, these deals and these conversations, and ulterior motives start cropping up, and interest, you start to see the per person's interest, and then these things don't happen. Number two, people don't go and seek for sponsorship or deals with your corporates because it's about, it's mine, this is mine, this is ours. So how are you gonna help us? Do you want a stake? Um, I've, I've heard of a situation with one of the teams where somebody wanted to, to come in and pump money but they wanted a stake. Mm -hmm. And the people who are responsible for the team were like, no, we're not gonna give you a stake. But it was for the benefit of the team in my view so it's, it's just those political issues um, or internal issues that are there, but also with the politics around that the, the, the corporates and the mines are being un, uh, unstably governed. Um, so they, they, there's a lot of barriers. You know, why are you sponsoring that team? Why are you sponsoring them? Why are you doing this for them? You know? So there's a lot of things politically um, that are, are just hindering the success of, of, of football in, 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 in Malachlin. I mean. You're correct. We should have had, or we should have a team in the NFD, in the PSL, that is well run, well structured, well sponsored, well financed, well resourced. Mm. But it's not happening, my man. It's because of people's interest. People don't have a heart for, for football. They don't have a heart for football. You're going to the provincial playoffs uh, with uh, hoping or with an intention 100%. to get promotion to the APC Motsepe League. You've played there, you know how difficult it is. Yeah. Uh, so it's very important that the team gets financial support. Uh, what do, now, we've spoken about the problems, but what is the solution? So the teams like Middle Lake United, when they go to the APC Multiple League, they get the necessary support mm -hmm. they need to be able to fight for promotion to the NFT. The solution to the problem, number one, is for people which are your chairman of the teams to receive and accept help. Um, I'm not saying people must sell a stake of their teams to ev anybody and any everybody and anybody, mm. but um, source out as, as much help as you can financially because football is financially run. There's a lot of things that happen that need uh, money. Mm. That's number one. Number two, engage these corporates engage these corporates. I mean, we've got, a, we've got 27 mines uh, in and around, 23, 27 mines in and around where I am at. Mm. 
surely we can engage them deeply, 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 deeply for them to actually help us. So I think it's also the engagement needs to happen on a constant and a continuous basis. We cannot engage small uh, companies just for water and fruits. Let's engage corporates. The corporates have got money. Yes. You understand? That is the solution. If you're not going to, if you, with, with the corporates, engage prominent, prominent people that can come in and say, right, I can help with ABC, you know, um, on the basis of ABC. And I think, and I really believe, you can't talk to everyone and everyone says no. Somebody's going to say yes. It's just engagement. Just Coach, engagement. before we close, we are at your gym. Yes. Uh, Lifestyle Phoenix. Yes. Briefly, tell us about your gym, uh, what's happening here, why, why should people come to this gym? Oh man, Lifestyle Pinnacle is a gym based like us, eh? and it's my baby. Um, it is one of the first, like my gym, it's your garage, back, back uh, room things, you know. So um, I wanted to go, not necessarily big, but big in a sense, I want a proper thing. Ekasi, why can't people like Ekasi have proper gym structures, proper gym facilities, proper facilities overall? Mm. Um, so this one is one of its kind, Ekasi, in terms of what we provide. We provide your functional training, we provide your aerobic workouts, we, uh, we do personal training and your group training, the strength training. So we are a wellness center, so to speak. Um, we also provide uh, free sessions for Abokoko, your pensioners, Abokoko and Abomkulu. They come here for free, we help them, um, and we, we, because they are not active, you know, so we help the Bokoko on a Monday to Friday uh, basis. They come here, we help them work out. So this one, because it's one of its kind, Ekasi, and the person involved, which is myself, is well-knowledged um, in fitness, well-knowledged in sports, um, and very, very committed in what I do. So yeah, the reason that people should come here is because we give you the best of what we have and the best of who we are. Coach, thank you very much for your time and all the best in the playoffs. Thank you, sir. Okay, so with, with the issue of players being complacent about uh, performing, it's we, we, we do post-mortems, um, game post-mortems on the Monday or the Tuesday when we come back, review the game. In reviewing the game, I always, every single day, I always remind them that we're not invincible. We might have won 8 nil, 10 nil, whatever the score, but we're not invincible. And once we think that we're unbeatable, that will be the death of us. I'll remind them that uh, on training days, if they're underperforming at training, I'll remind them that you're thinking now you're big, you're thinking now no one will beat you, and you'll be beat. So you've got to have the right psychological mindset. On match days, I, will, I don't do a lot of talking on match days prior to the game, but one of the key things that I do remind them of is that you're not gonna come here and take p people's points, and they're, gonna, they're not gonna give you points and goals. So you've gotta go there and earn them and fight for them. So I think that does, in a sense, even if you see a few of them trying to drag their feet and so on, it does kind of remind them, and they also remind each other that, hey guys, it's not going to be all a bit of roses, let's fight and let's play hard. So those conversations, it's what keeps their, mental, their, their mindsets oiled, in my view. Mm. So Coach, you, you've won now your, your, your stream, and uh, you go to, to the Nkangala region playoffs. Uh, can you just take us through the playoffs? Uh, how many games did you play and how did you do? Um, we, 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 firstly, we, I think we prepared very well uh, mm. building up to those playoffs. Um, and there was always going to be a challenge. Play playoffs are always a challenge. It's a once-off. You win, you go through, you lose and you go back and start again. So we played the first game, which in my view and in our view was not a, a tough one. The guys had played, they, I think they were a bit tired and we just kind of almost ran over them and we managed to win that game by four goals. It was a fairly easy game, fairly easy, not taking nothing away from the oppo uh, uh, oppo opposition team, but came the last game. That was a game basically of our lives because in the last season, that is the game that the, the Middlebeck United had lost. Mm. So this one they had to win and we had a very tough opponent. First 10, 15 minutes, those guys were over us. They came, they came, they came to a point where we actually asked our goalkeeper to, to buy us time for a quick chat, <laughs> right? So we, he bought us time, we called the, the lads in, we just had a quick chat to fix the problems that were happening. Mm. Who, uh, how we're marking, how we're winning the ball, how we're not winning the ball. Had a quick conversation, went back in there, tables kind of changed. And the guys just, uh, they just worked hard. They just worked really, really hard. It was a, a big clash. But defensively, I know and I trust the boys, defensively, we, 
were, we were basically solid. Mm. It was an issue of fi us finding our goal. It was an issue of just us finding our goal. And we were very fortunate we found our goal. And in finding our goal, we just tried to go for another one. That's, w that's what we always do. But, but we're always cognizant of the fact that we've got to shut the back door. Although we go forward, but we've got to shut the back door. It didn't come. It didn't come. And then things in football happened, and now people are flogging the field. And there was a bit of chaos there. But I think uh, there was about three or four minutes left of the game. Mm. So management and staff tried to fix that issue. And the issue was apparently fixed. And yeah, that's, it was a tense game. Mm. Um, so that's how we won. That's how we won. I, I don't know. I don't want to get into too much detail on that one. But yeah, that's how we went through. Yeah. Uh, so days. yeah, so just for, for context, you were playing in Delmas yes. against Botling FC. Both United, United FC, yes, yes. which is a team from Delmas. Exactly. So we were away yes. <laughs> playing against the crowd, crowd oh uh, in, in Delmas. Yeah. And we, towards the end of the game, they invaded the pitch. Yeah. I guess uh, they couldn't accept that their team <laughs> is not going it's to the provincial yeah. playoffs. Uh, so. But in, in the playoffs, uh, Coach, having uh, looked at your stats in your, in your stream where you did very well, only lost one game, won 16 out of 18, scored 74 goals and only considered seven. Now we are playing against champions from other streams. Mm -hmm. Did you feel that perhaps uh, the level now is a bit higher compared to, to what you used to in the league where you are winning 4 5 nil, and so on? No, not at all. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think I had a quick review of the Delmas teams. Um, I think even Ibu playing United, they didn't play a lot of their games or some of their games. So they were picking up walkover points here and there. Oh, okay. The others uh, from Wandebele, it was they just made it through, you know. So the, 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 the league was fairly balanced for them. You know, you've got them competing for number one and two or number three, shifting positions all, uh, on, at the top and so on and so forth. So I did not feel that they were very competitive, mm. honestly speaking. I felt they're a team that can play, obviously, we're not going to walk over them, but they will not give us a big run. Mm. Uh, e e Delmas United gave us a run because they were at home. Um, they felt they are the ones that are going to go through. They had the home supporters all around the pitch. So they came guns blazing. They, they wanted it. They wanted it. We wanted it more. That's why we, I think at the end we, we, we got it. So I was not really, really threatened or scared to say they'll, they're, they, they've got a bigger performance value. No. Uh, Coach, you, you obviously you come from a conditioning background. Uh, do you think that your knowledge in, in conditioning of players, now that you are coach, gives your players the advantage uh, in, in games? Oh, 100%. Mm. Oh, 100%. Um, preparation, pre preparation wise, how we prepare, what we do on a Monday to Thursday, Monday to Friday uh, program, how we prepare them. I know that, okay, now it's too much, now it's too low, now we need to maintain it, now we need to keep it, now we need to press it. You know, mm -hmm. um, I, I knew that going to the playoffs, we're going to play two games uh, concurrently. So three weeks prior, a month prior, I worked more on the conditioning of the players. I worked more. It's not pre-season, but I pushed uh, and I told them, I explained to them, we're going to play two games, one after the other. We need to push your, your fitness level just a bit more. So we need to work a bit harder. So I think that does give us a bit of an edge, considering and knowing the fact that um, these other teams might not have I'm an amateur coach myself, I'm an yes. amateur myself, but I've got, as you said, the conditioning um, experience and the playing experience. So I can put these two things together versus another team that just has somebody that knows football. Yeah. So uh, last season, the team failed at the regional uh, playoffs. You've won now. So yeah. you've done better than they did last <laughs> season. Fortunately. But, yeah. but it's not the end. You now have to go to, to the provincial playoffs. Uh, do you think your team is ready? My team is ready. <laughs> My team is ready. Um, there are a lot of in-house issues that are telling me <laughs> that we're ready. <laughs> because the, the, the fire that's burning in that team mm. um, guarantees me that these boys want it. These boys want it so much. They, they wanted so much that 
they would want to assist in coaching. They would coach each other on and off the field. Players that are outside would be coaching players in field. Mm. So that, for me, says the guys want it. Mm. I believe the, that, that we are ready. So the time between your, your last game in the, prov sorry, in the regional playoffs and uh, you, the provincial playoffs, which we believe will be sometime next week, uh, how, in between, how are you managing the sharpness of your players? Because without competitive football, yeah. you might lose that edge. Yeah. So what is it that you are doing to ensure that they don't lose that edge, that when they go to the provincial playoffs, the, the time they spend not without competitive football yeah. does not affect their performance? Um, obviously, we compensate. We can only compensate that with our training sessions, mm. trying to keep our, our training sessions at a high intensity. Remember, all other uh, uh, leagues are closed. Your, yes. your ABC Matiba teams are closed. We cannot get games there. Yes. Um, leagues are closed. We're the only ones that are left. So we can't get games. And everyone has gone home. So we really, really, it, it, is, it is a challenge for us. And we've had this conversation um, in and amongst the team to say, this is a challenge. We need to keep char sharp. We need more, a lot of game time, which we're not getting. So we just, we have to just compensate it with our training sessions, with how we structure them, how we work at training, what we demand at training. That is the only option that we have.